here we are again. Slightly early, 8.59. Let's see if there's anybody out there tonight. <clears throat> Hi Jill, nice to see you. How you doing? Hope Ryan's all right. Anne, nice to see you. Hope you've had a good day. So we'll just wait for a few people to jump on. I sort of Press the button slightly early today. So, um, hi Wendy, hi Lionel. This is good. How are you guys doing? So, uh, Virginia, how are you, lovely? All right. Paul and Rita, nice to see you. Hope you guys are okay. I know it's tough times. <coughs> So we'll just wait for a few more folk to jump on. Uh, here we go. Hi, Richard. Simon. Anne. That's good. Ryan's working for the NHS. Bless him. I'll give him my love. That's great. Good man. Uh, Lionel. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Busy, busy day today. So I'm feeling a little bit tired, but um, all good. All good. This is good. So just wait a few moments because I did press the button early. <clears throat> Very hot. Okay, over 30 degrees. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Yeah, it's been slightly duller here, our end, but um yeah, this is good. So, guys, what I'm gonna do today, um, obviously we're gonna have a time of prayer. Um we're going up in three weeks. Oh, okay. That's good. We'll do say hello up in Manchester, uh, Jill. That's good. Hi, Pauline. Nice to see you. Um, so, guys, I'm going to be um, carrying on. Today's reading I've taken from here, which is the um, Bob Goff of Love Does Fame, uh, Living in Grace, Walking in Love. These are um, devotionals for every day, of the, uh, every day of the year. And today's is particularly, I thought, relevant with what's what's been going on, which is really good. Uh, the, the title is God isn't trying to make our lives easier. He wants he wants them to be more meaningful. Hi, Rosie. Nice to see you. Leanne, nice to see you. This is good. This is good. <clears throat> so, guys, we're going to come and we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to draw near to God. So we're just going to still our breathing and then we're going to focus on the Lord and uh, just going to start to bring stuff that we're grateful for today. Um, I'm very grateful today that I've been working. I'm very grateful that I've got work. I'm just very conscious that this is a really tough time for a lot of folk, perhaps being laid off. Quite a few people I know in my family have been made redundant and um, lost their jobs and having to change what they're gonna do. So I know it's tough times for everyone. So, um, so let's just come to God um, and draw close to him who knows all our situations, knows all our circumstances, knows all our worries. So let's just... Uh, Breathe deeply and just calm our spirits, calm our body so that we can draw close to, to the Lord. Father, thank you that we can come at the end of the day, Lord, with grateful hearts for so many things. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Lord, thank you that we have roofs over our heads. Lord, thank you, Father, that we have food on, our, food on our plates. Lord, thank you that so many of us have gainful employment. Lord, thank you that so many of us have folk around us who we love. Community. Lord, thank you for St. Mags. Lord, thank you for people who are around us who inspire us. Thank you for people around us who we care about. Lord, we just draw close to you at the end of this day. Lord, with grateful hearts.
So maybe you just want to bring to mind perhaps one or two things today to be thankful for. <coughs> Jean, nice to see you. Hayley. So I just want to share this, uh, this passage. Uh, it's from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And I think it's really relevant. It's for this, uh, this reading today. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. It's a great powerful verse this because it's talking about the fact that actually we talk about spiritual warfare, that actually we all have temptations, we all have things that we struggle with and yet he says here no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. You know we're all this together, everybody uh, has the same struggles, the same uh, temptations and God and yet God is faithful, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. I just want to read what um, Bob Goff said. If you haven't read Love Does, I really recommend it. Fantastic guy, this guy. And this is what Bob Goff says. He says, whenever I'm in the self-help section of a bookstore, things start to feel a little suspicious. If everyone is telling the truth, I can apparently lose 12 inches in 12 weeks, work for less than half a day a year, and make more money, get more friends, increase my influence, have more confidence at least a dozen other things by just changing one or two simple things in my life. I bet some of these books do actually work, but the reason I'm suspicious is because the promise of a shortcut isn't how I see the most important thing in my life, which is my faith. Cutting corners in faith can rob us of something important, the challenges we need to face and the relationships we need to make along the way. We need a challenge to grow, to break the plateau of our faith or our routine. The relationships that we make add layers of richness and teach us we can't do everything alone. Sometimes the only path to the life you want has to go over some rough terrain. God isn't trying to make our lives easier. He wants to make them more meaningful. And the meaningful stuff happens when we invest ourselves in the passions and in the people around us. Our best memories are the ones where we overcome adversity at the end of a long struggle. They include people who have seen us at our worst and loved us all the more for it. There are no shortcomings to a more meaningful life and a deeper faith. It takes a lot of love and courage. Will we encounter some setbacks? You bet. But we must stay the course. And then Rob, Bob Goff puts these two questions. He says, what setbacks have you faced that are discouraging you from your progress? And the thing I really like about this, and it, the, re, the reason when I was reading it this morning, that I think is so relevant is that actually we're in a time of real transition coming out of lockdown, when I think a lot of people are gonna be made unemployment, made in, unemployed, a lot of people can lose their jobs, a lot of people are gonna be struggling financially, and that's really tough. And um, I know what that's like, I really know what that's like. I've, I've been made redundant three times in my life. And um, the last time was 12 years ago when I had to close my own business and make all my employees unemployed at the crash in 2008. And it was it was just devastating. You know, I, you just feel such a sense of terrible failure, such a sense of personal loss. And, uh, you know, most of the guys who'd worked for me, had worked for me for over 10 years and I just had to let them all go. It was just awful. And um, and yet I can say I can testify that actually the three times I've been made redundant, one by Robert Maxwell back in the 90s, one by Nortel, um, sorry, back in the 80s, one by Nortel in the 90s. And then my own business is that each time that's happened, that God has been so faithful and actually opened doors of opportunity that it's been a good thing that's come out of it. And uh, my faith has grown through it. And I'm, I, ju I don't know whether there's any people watching tonight who perhaps are going through, uh, through this transition where perhaps they've lost their job or they're really struggling with employment or stuff like that. 
but actually God uses adversity to actually strengthen our faith, to actually build our faith, to actually teach us stuff that perhaps we need to learn about ourselves. And um, that it's a good thing that actually, if we're gonna be people of God who are really trustworthy, then he's gonna test us in those times that are really, really tough and really tough. And I think the thing that I would say to people, perhaps who are going through it, is you do feel this terrible sense of failure, even though, you know, it's not your fault. You feel this terrible sense of failure and that can be crushing to your self-esteem, your self-confidence. And so I would encourage you tonight that actually God is in this with you. You know, God is in this with you. And actually sometimes the only path to the life you want to, to has to go over some really rough terrain and that actually God will guide you and help you and direct you. So I think this is a wonderful piece. When we are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure. You know that God wants us to become strong. He wants us to endure. He wants us to become people of real resilience in our faith and uh, to stand firm when the going gets really tough and to stand firm when things are really, really awful. Um, you know, Rosie, I, I know we were praying for you with your apartments and uh, continue to do that. But, you know, you get loads of bookings. I know what it's like when you run a business so hard. And yet, you know, God is here with us. Uh, when I lost my business, it opened the door for me to uh, just really be released to do Unleashed, uh, to teach music, to do the stuff that I was really passionate about. And uh, I can I can honestly say that it was actually you know, the Lord's, I could see the Lord's hand in it. At the time, it was so awful. We nearly lost our house. We had people leaving food packages on our doorstep. You know, it was just such an awful time. We had no money. <laughs> it was just awful. But God is faithful. God is so faithful and he sees us through. And I know that he's faithful because I've I've been there. So uh, can I just say, guys, um, I don't know whether there's any... Um, whether I'm being made redundant after 16 years and finished work, your honesty is super helpful. Samantha, well, let's pray for you, lovely. Let's do this. Uh, Father God, we just want to lift up Samantha to you now. Uh, Father, being made redundant after 16 years and we'll finish in five weeks. Father, we just thank you that you have a plan for her. Lord, although this is devastating, although it's so hard, Father God, that you would show your way forward that you would provide for her every need and that, Father God, you would find the right employment for her. Father, I know what it's like. Lord, I just lift her up to you tonight and pray, Father God, that you would walk with her through these difficult days and that, Father, she would be able to testify that you are faithful, that you are super faithful. So um, let's just see if there's any other, any other prayer requests here. No. So let's just draw near to God. I think it's great what the um, Chancellor's done today, particularly for the arts, uh, you know, putting the money in for that. And, uh, you know, I know the government are trying to do their very best, but there are going to be lots of casualties. There's going to be lots of people uh, really struggling. So let's just draw close to God now and bring perhaps people we know who are really um, struggling at this time. Father, we come to you. Lord, we're conscious that the country is, Lord, at a real turning point. Lord, as we ease up out of uh, this awful period with people losing their jobs. So, Father, we commit everyone we know who's going through this and ask that, Father, your hand of blessing will be upon them. Father, thank you that you are faithful, that we can come to you with all our troubles, all our failings, all our fears, and know that you are faithful, God. Amen. So, guys, we're going to we're gonna sort of round things up. Um, I love this prayer here that we say every morning. Um, so we're going to play and then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer and then we'll close. I hope it's been helpful tonight. I just really felt, you know, felt really convicted to actually share it because I know there's probably a lot of people really going through this at the moment and they just need to know that actually God is always faithful. So let's just draw close to God once more and just pray these closing prayers together. Father God, thank you that you've helped me to live this day to the full. Lord, help me tomorrow to be true to you in all that I do, in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say.
So let's just draw to God, close to God and just say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and the chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So guys, quite a short one tonight, but um, hope you all sleep well, and uh, I will see you um, see you another time. So sleep well and have a good day tomorrow. Bless you.